Hello and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 mini project series and again we're back in Coventry City we've got our city in, we've got all our colours corrected on our textures and now what we're going to do is look at what it looks like at night so we can change it to night time in our dev toolbar by just going up to options and then we can see the local time here and you can just drag this to change it to night time and we can see by default because we're not using all of the Google roads we get all of the Bing roads which get lights on anyway and there's a lot of automated lights automatically placed by Microsoft Flight Simulator over key buildings so we've got ones over the car parks here but obviously large parts of the city are still in darkness and we can't see a lot of the detail of the main buildings where there would definitely be light at night one of the things that we can't do at the moment with this is add lights to the building textures. If we look at this building at night time we'd like to see some of these lights appear. To do that you have to use emissive textures so this is one of the automatically generated buildings by the simulator. And we can see the lights have come on and that's using emissive textures which is really difficult to do on the Google image textures even if you do bake it into a single texture. So we're not going to bother doing that. But what we can do is two other ways of adding lights into the game is one using the scenery where there are a couple of lights already. So if we type in light and then underscore and then scroll down we've got light cold, light warm and light warm medium. These are three lights that we can use so if we add a light cold into the game. It puts us a light node in. If we take off snap to ground, we can then drag it around and we can see that it's illuminating that area for us as we move it around. So we can use light cold. That gives you a cold white light and it's quite large. And you've also got light warm. If we add light warm in and take off snap to ground, this is more of a, a warmer yellowy light rather than the stark white light. And these work quite well for kind of like street lamps for instance or building lights. So you could put one just there and maybe with this light cold you could add it over buildings to give the impression that there's a light on top perhaps. And we can go around just placing these lights as and where we think that they'd need to fit just to brighten up our scenery. So let's add a few of these in and see what it looks like. And there we go, I've just added a collection of light colds and warm lights all around here just to highlight some of the buildings at night. And we can see it looks a little bit more city like now and it's more vibrant. The next thing we can do is if we wanted to spruce this up a little bit more, let's say if we go down to this area here where the sky dome and the cinema is, there's also some clubs down here and we could add custom lights and colourful lights in Blender to make this look a little bit more vibrant. So let's go into Blender and do that now. So now we're in Blender, we can add some custom lights into here. We can add spotlights or point lights. A spotlight will shine a spot of light on an area and a point light will just emit light from that area. So we just add a couple of point lights in for now. So if you go to add and then down to light and then click point, it will add a point light on here and we can put that wherever we want it to go. And then if you go over to Blender up into the top and click viewport shading, it will show that light being emitted onto there. Now we need to set this light up. So on the light object properties, if you go down to the MSFS properties, Make sure you've got has symmetry ticked and you've got the day and night cycle ticked. We won't worry about any of these other settings for now. I do have other videos on lighting that shows these settings if need be. But we need the day and night cycle ticked because we only want this light to come on at night time. And then what we can do is choose the colour for this light. So at the moment if we just go to the light properties we can see that it's a clear white light. We can change this colour for a different colour if we wanted to. So we could pick a nice pink and we could change the strength of this colour, make it 50 watts. And then we could move this around and put it exactly where we wanted it. So we could say we have one light there and then we could do other things here as well. So if we add another light in, so add light point and we put this one in front of the IKEA sign perhaps. Make sure you go back to the object properties tick has symmetry and day and night cycle for every time you create a light then go into the object data properties and if we change this one to yellow and we move it as close as possible to the sign it will kind of give the impression that that ikea text is glowing yellow at night and we could probably put a couple of those around here so there's another one there again what you can do with the lights is you can just duplicate them so shift d to duplicate in blender and then we can move that around and it'll keep all the settings of that light and we could just place these just around by the signs there just to make it look as if that sign is glowing yellow at night and there's another one at the back so we can just keep duplicating this and get them all in position where you want them to be 
Then when you have all your lights set up, we have to be careful now for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you remember in the previous video, we updated the textures in here. So if we were to go into our Coventry directory and then package sources, model lib and texture, all these textures have now been treated to reduce that blue. If we were to save this model, it's going to overwrite those textures again, which we don't want to do because we're going to have to post process them all again. So what we can do here is if you just make a new directory called delete, and now when we export our model, we can't export it using the batch lot again because all these lights don't belong to an individual lot. So we have to export this differently. We have to export this one lot at a time. And then you can choose which ones you want to keep the lights with and which ones you don't. So let's do the high lot first. So we're going to select all of our lights by just pressing the shift key down and then clicking. And then that's got all the lights selected and then holding the left control key and selecting the high lot will get all of our lights selected and the high lot. And now what we're going to do is go to file, export, and then extended GLTF 2.0. And then we need to go to package sources, model lib, and then to the folder where we've got this saved. So mine was saved in Coventry Skydome. And now I'm just saving over the lot zero. So I'm going to select that, but I'm not going to export it just yet. And then in the MSFS properties, I'm going to untick both of these as I don't want it to overwrite this stuff. And then in texture, rather than write to that texture, I'm just going to write to the delete folder. So it's going to save the new textures into this delete folder. And then when we finish with these, we can just get rid of this folder as we won't need it. Make sure include has got selected objects and custom properties. Transform is Y up. Geometry, everything's ticked, and then we can ignore the other two. And then export this one. And now we want to deselect our high lot. So left control click and then click on there. That will have deselected that, but keep all our point lights selected. And then we can select our medium one. And then again, we just need to export this out to the medium lot. And the medium lot is called lot 01. Everything should have stayed the same. So we can just select lot 01, click export. And now finally, this is down to personal preference, but you may not want to include the lights with your low level of detail. If you don't, you can just not bother saving the low level of detail. Or if you've made any other changes, you can select that. Or if you want to keep a few lights in for the low level of detail, maybe just keep a couple in like this, then you can do that as well. So just select the ones that you want or don't want to include. And then all you need to do is with everything selected, go to File, Export, Extended, GLTF. And this one will be Lodge 2. And then click Export. Now this is also going to have another side effect. If you remember, we edited the GLTF files in Notepad++ to increase that metallic factor. Now we've saved these again, it will have reset that metallic factor for us. So we need to go and re-edit those files for these models in Notepad++. And then again in Notepad++, just go all the way down until you find where it says metallic factor. And then we can just select this, press Control H to bring up the replace, and then replace with metallic factor 0.5, and then click replace all in all open documents. And then once that is done, you can then just click save all to save all of these documents. And then when you go back to the simulator, those models will load in, and you can now see we've got custom colored lights on here. And it looks like that IKEA light is lighting up a little bit with that yellow. The one thing to note is if you do add in another default light from the sim, like a light cold, and then you add that above these custom lights, it will drown that colour out because this light is much stronger than those lights. So anywhere you put one of those, it will just drown out those existing lights. So you're better off if you do want white light to be included with the model as well, then to include that in the Blender model. And there we go. We've added some lights to our city to make it look a little bit more vibrant at night. And we can do the same over at our stadium. So again, we can see by default, this Tesco building is pretty well lit. And the stadium isn't too bad. It needs some lighting inside more. And again, we can choose whether we want to use the light cold here. So we can just come in and we can place our own custom spotlights. And we can see here that on the pitch, it's actually trying to grow some trees automatically. And we can fix that quite easily just by selecting this polygon that is turning off the default stadium. And if we go to vegetation, we can set the scale all the way down to zero. And that will mean no trees will appear on this pitch. We could then also do things like go into the model and we could do the same as what we did with the IKEA text. Make it look like this is glowing red. 
and down here we could make this look like it's glowing red and we could add some sporadic white lights all around here just to make it look a little bit more bright at night. So there we go, there's our stadium at night now. It looks much better than the default one that comes with the game. And we can go back to the city and we can see that. And we can see that when we go to the daytime, these lights will naturally turn themselves off. So if we go back today, all the lights have gone off. And if we zoom back down here, we can see these coloured lights are now being drowned out by the natural sunlight. And there we go, we've added lights to our city. So all we need to do now is get this saved. So click Save Scenery. And then if we go to our project and click on our project name and go to the inspector and click Build Package. Once that's built, we'll get the console appear and then we'll have a package ready to deploy. So that's going to be the end of it for this video. In the next video, I'll go through those final stages of how we take that package, how we zip it up and then how we can share it with other people. I'll show how you can put it on flightsim.to if you wanted to share that with the rest of the world. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please consider subscribing to the channel, leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.